In 1960, a trip from London to New York took over 10 hours on a turboprop engine. Today, thanks to the jet engine, it takes only seven. This remarkable reduction in travel time is a testament to the vision of two engineers, Sir Frank Whittle, a British pioneer, and Hans Joachim Pabst von Ohain, who ran the first operational jet engine while Germany was under Nazi rule. But let's start from the beginning. You probably know those two, the Wright brothers. They dreamed of conquering the sky. So they embarked on an adventure to create the first successful airplane in 1903. The process was straightforward. First, they had to make and fly a glider to gather all of the aerodynamic data. Then, they identified all of the parts they needed to manufacture a plane to fly at least a couple of hundred feet properly. But a crucial element was missing, a powerful yet lightweight engine. Existing options simply wouldn't do it. On December 17, 1903, their dreams soared into reality. The Wright brothers launched their first ever controlled, sustained flight in their revolutionary aircraft. Through two years of relentless tinkering and innovation, on December 17, 1903, the Wright brothers made their dream come true. Time seemed to bend as Wilbur's masterful touch propelled the aircraft on a record-breaking journey, 255.6 meters in a mere 59 seconds. This day marked the dawn of a new era, the age of flight. But what type of engine was used on that plane? Well, it's essentially the same type of engine used in cars. Since its first introduction, it has been used in airplanes since the beginning of aviation. Now, how do they work? The question is, how do you explain it without being boring? I'll try. So, you'll usually find a four-stroke engine in most piston-powered aircrafts, meaning there are four stages to be completed in order to make the plane go flying. The mixture of air and fuel goes into the cylinder. With the intake valve closing, the piston goes up and compresses the mixture. This is the compression stage. From there, the spark plug ignites the mixture and the combustion generates power that pushes the piston down. That's where the power is generated. The last stage is the exhaust, in which the exhaust valve opens and gases exit the cylinder. This whole process is repeated, making the propeller, well, propel and get the airplane flying. The process repeats until either the pilot gets bored of flying or he's out of fuel. With jet engines, it's quite a different story. More boring talk is incoming. Jet engines produce through a completely different process. Instead of pistons, they rely on a masterfully designed turbine. Imagine a series of blades spinning at incredible speeds, drawing in air from the front. This air is then compressed and mixed with a finely sprayed fuel, creating a potent cocktail. With a spark, this mixture explodes, generating a powerful thrust. The hot gases are then channeled out the back, propelling the engine forward. But that's not all. These escaping gases also spin another set of blades connected to the main shaft, powering the entire system. It's a clever ballet of air, fuel and fire, all working together to propel the aircraft through the skies. Genius system, right? But who created the first jet engine? Well, if you really want to know, we'll have to go back in time to Nazi Germany. This is Hans von Ohain from Germany, an engineering student who envisioned planes flying as fast as 500 miles per hour. The idea first came to him when he was studying at the University of Göttingen. He didn't waste time. With clever calculations, he proved to his professors that flying beyond 500 miles per hour is possible. After his graduation, the professor introduced him to Ernst Heinkel, one of the most prominent aircraft manufacturers, who, just like Hans, was obsessed with high-speed flights. With all the funding and time, Hans, along with Heinkel's team, developed the HES-3, a centrifugal flow turbojet engine. The engine worked the same way I've just described it. Take in air, compress it, inject fuel into it, and ignite the mixture to create a high-speed exhaust jet. Now, with the engine ready, the team developed the airframe that would accommodate the jet engine. The aircraft had a sleek and dynamic design to maximize its aerodynamic efficiency. The engine was mounted in the fuselage and the exhaust was expelled at the rear. 
It got its first name, HE179, not quite a creative one. On August 27, 1939, the HE-127 successfully soared into the sky, marking the first time an aircraft took off and flew with the sole power of a jet engine. But most importantly, both Hans and Ernst proved the world right. Planes can fly over 500 miles per hour. With just enough time, they could make jet airliners that could transport people worldwide. But with the start of World War II, the new rule of Germany would give them a new task to complete. Hans quickly became a part of the team with Messerschmitt, a different aviation company tasked with creating a fighter jet with new turbojet engines that would upgrade the Air Force to a new level. Hans developed a new jet engine, Junkers Jumo 004, and fitted it in the new airframe, which would soon become Messerschmitt ME262. This was the first fighter jet recorded in history. Yet, it was an expensive piece of technology requiring more fuel than propeller aircraft. But the Germans saw it as worth their time. Since its first combat deployment back in 1944, a single ME-262 was claimed to have destroyed 19 Allied planes. Needless to say, the plane was ridiculously fast, being able to outrun any other plane. But in the end, it didn't bring a decisive victory to Nazi Germany. However, the creation of ME-262 taught a lot of valuable lessons that influenced the development of the jet fighters during the early years of the Cold War. With the new age of jet-powered fighters, everything changed. Tactics, strategies and capabilities of air forces around the world. Now, jet engines are basically everywhere, with companies even developing supersonic jet engines. But this would be a story for a different time. Remember to hit the subscribe button and ring that bell to stay updated with our latest content. And while you're here, why not check out another one of our exciting videos? Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.